Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Tigers Talk Rugby. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to thank Tiger Vision for letting us use their uh, equipment and facilities. As always, we are very thankful for them and really happy we get to do this. Uh, Actually, as a little side note, we're in a new studio right now. We're in a new yeah. podcast studio. So Yeah, they set up a little space on the side of um, their studio their primary studio in which has like actual podcasting equipment and like specifically and and a podcasting space so hopefully the quality of these episodes are going to get a uh, way better in the future yeah so um right now we're personally having some technical difficulties so we're recording on a separate set of private mics but uh we'll, we'll get it figured out so on that note I'm Ethan Richards. And I'm CJ Bakel. And today we're going to kind of talk about some college rugby. There's, you know, this C, this D1A season as of recently has been crazy. We've got a lot of, you know, upsets, big wins, you know, shakeups than nor- compared to normal. Um, some interesting news when it comes to eligibility. Um, so... Yeah. Yeah, let's first start off with your own Clemson rugby team. Yeah. And then we'll build to talk about more about the the Mid South and then we'll talk about the D one A as a whole later on. Yeah, so CJ, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question right off the bat. What's left for Clemson rugby this semester? Because obviously so, you you had a lot of your games in February, so what do you got for the rest of the semester? So for the rest of the semester we do have we do have stuff coming out. The Clemson rugby team does have some stuff scheduled, so Right now, we are looking ahead for uh, eight. So we have a game to play against UNC Wilmington later this month. Okay. So, so what, what's the date on that? Do you know? It'll be I think March twenty eighth is the date. Twenty eighth. Okay. So, so right at the end of the month. Right at the end of the month, we're going to be going up to UNC Wilmington to go uh, face their side. It'll be primarily our men's side who goes and faces them. So it'll be. You know, it'll be interesting to see who who ends up going, who yeah, is, what the score will be for that one. For sure, so we'll go and play UNC Wilmington, and then after that, we have uh, Tropical Sevens in Orlando, Florida. So we'll be going to Orlando, Florida, go Ooh. play in the Sevens tournament down there. That'll be a fun weekend, which is April tenth. So that'll be a great weekend because we'll be facing a lot of teams that we normally don't face. Yeah, for whether sure. Whether it be college teams or men's teams. Yeah, so so on that, um, if anybody is down in Orlando during that weekend, go check out and meet some of the guys. I'll be there. Yeah, CJ will be there. It's I'll be there. I might not be playing, but I'll definitely <laughs> be there. Yeah, that'll be a fun trip. Yeah, it'll sure. be a great trip. Um, I'm guessing y'all going, are driving down there. A yeah, we'll of, be going yeah. on Friday. I think we'll be leaving you know, Clemson on Friday, and then we'll be back by either Sunday or Monday, depending on... Uh, how the results go with the, with the weekend. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, so, and then yeah. after that, a week after that, we will be playing South Carolina. Oh, I am so looking forward to watching this game. So, you know, in the past, Clemson, South Carolina, you know, obviously huge rivalry. Yeah, for those who aren't from South Carolina or or, or, or listening from somewhere who they don't understand the, the area... Clemson, South Carolina is the big football rivalry for South Carolina and, and big sports rivalry in general. Like I know um, a couple years ago uh, when Clemson rugby was playing USC, the last time they played, which has been like several years at this point, the viewership peaked on the live stream to like thirteen or 1,400 people. Yeah, it was on a, a Facebook lot. live stream. So yeah, like, and like, like people love just... If they see Clemson versus USC, people will come and support just to be rooting against USC. Or rooting against Clemson. Yeah, or rooting against Clemson. Either way. If, if they're from the other side. So, yeah, the, April 18th, we state. plan on having that match, and it's supposed to be our Hall of Fame weekend. So, more information will be coming out with that uh, through the Clemson Rugby Foundation and the rugby team. So Okay. But... Keep, you know, make sure everybody's, like, Facebook, your emails are open, you're checking, you know, checking Instagram, checking your email, checking Facebook, because more information will be coming out on that, because it should be a big weekend, especially if you're an alumni. 
Yeah, I uh, I just want to see y'all beat USC. Hey, we still have the trophy from many years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because last time they played, we, we tried to schedule some matches. What was that, two years ago we tried to schedule a match? Yeah, I think it was my freshman year, yeah. Yeah, and they canceled on us because of they, they didn't feel like they had a side that couldn't compete. Uh, so... Which is why uh, Alabama got scheduled, correct? Yeah, yeah. that's why Alabama got re- scheduled it for them instead. So it's been before CJ and I's time at Clemson um, yeah, as students. The, yeah, I think the last time Clemson played South Carolina was when we were seniors in high school. Yeah, so this is going to be a big, big comeback of the rivalry. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, this, it'll be fun. I'd, I'd be. I mean, who doesn't like to to watch Clemson versus? South Carolina in anything. I want y'all to be beating them so bad that they'll put you at like inside center. Me? Yeah, you. Oh. I would you love to see I'm gonna it. have to talk to Dossie about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I want y'all to run the score up and then be like, all right, throw throw CJ in at, at center. If that were the case, I'd probably put, end up being moved to like put moved Harry to the and bench. Reed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But put Harry and Reed at prop, you know, just like yikes. Roll, roll <laughs> some switches yikes. around. <laughs> no, I'm just messing. But uh, uh, yeah, no. So is it? Um, is that rounding out your year? Thing? Yeah, that would be it. Well, there, there, there might be a couple other switch ups with the schedule in uh, in more uh, recent times. So again, always keep your keep your ears open for any new games. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So, because our, well, actually, that, that'll be right at the end of our semester. So that's a perfect, Yeah, once the 18th is roundup. done, it's kind of like, all right, every, Two weeks. everything's done. Then finals is the next week and semester's over. Yeah, wow. Well, that, that's a perfect way to round out the semester. So um, I feel like we've covered it. So, yeah. So let's, let's go on to some Mid-South. Yeah, so the Mid South, the wild chaos that is the D Y Mid South <laughs> this year, like, yeah, s- Lindenwood, just Lindenwood's tearing it up right now. Dominated Arc State. So this last weekend, Lindenwood played Arc State at home and defeated them. Defeated the Red Wolves forty three to five. A very stark contrast to Arc State's game versus Life, not but what a month ago. Roughly, yeah, yeah. Which which was a, a few point victory over life that Arc State achieved. Um, but uh, obviously, Lindenwood played life, and it was a seven point game. And and now Lindenwood comes in uh, against Arc State and and just flips the tables from from all these other close matches with these three teams and and takes this final final roundup and and just yeah it just seems kind of wild dominates because like you know we had arc state versus life mm-hmm. life being upset the next week life versus lindenwood life like winning winning close, a close game. one it wasn't a, it wasn't like a big ups it wasn't like a huge like Score difference, crushing, like, yeah. Still winning, and then the week after that, Lindenwood smacking Arkansas State. So, I'm wondering. Yeah. I, I'm wondering a couple things about this match. This, uh, these like three matchups. Yeah. So, when Life played Arkansas State, it was supposed to be at Life. Yep, and it ended up being at Arkansas. It ended up being at Arkansas because Arkansas said that they couldn't afford to go to, to Marietta, Georgia. Right, which, I mean, understandable. It's still a hefty travel, and yeah, the costs it, of travel are Right, 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 right. High. And that's fine. Like, I understand that. Yeah. But I'm wondering if the referee was the same mm. for that match. The reason why I say this was because the week after Arkansas beat uh, Life, Clemson... Play so we played Clemson rugby team played Arkansas, and the result didn't go our way. But there was a couple things that I noticed between Arkansas, there especially in their scrums, between our week and the week before. So the week before, it seemed Arkansas State was demolishing life in the scrums. It was a ama- It was like 
it was they were it was it was wild. They were demolishing. Them. Like I watched the replay. They felt almost uncontested when yeah, Arkansas they, it, was rolling the it, ball it, in. It, yeah, exactly. It it looked almost uncontested. Like life wasn't even trying. And I'm thinking, like, how is this possible? Life is really well drilled. They're really well dis- disciplined. They've got big guys up front, athletes, and shoot, their hooker is a international uh, player for Zimbabwe. So I'm thinking, oh gosh, this is this seems strange. So the next week when we played them, uh, I noticed that the sir wasn't allowing for a yes nine call. So when you go to scrums, if you know the game and the rules, you go crouch, bind, set, and then the ref goes for a yes nine so that the nine could put the ball in. And after that yes nine call, the nine could put the ball in whenever he wants. Mm -hmm. So the referee wasn't doing that yes nine call and instead was just going crouch mind set and then immediately as set was called there'd be the collision at the scrum and then Arkansas State's nine would immediately put it in. So it was almost as if they were using that momentum with that collision to push us back. So in hindsight, if the referee was the same, maybe that is why life was rolled over. In in the scrums. In the scrums. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting point. I've I I can't say because I wasn't at either of those games, but right. Uh, and you can't you can't hear the sir on the films for yeah. the games. Unfortunately, um, it's not quite at that level. Uh, <laughs> right. But um, yeah, I could see that being a very heavy impact in the the flow of games during set piece, especially when the set piece is going our state's way. Right. So, yeah. Big momentum shifter. Other other big um, uh, other big points to this is this is the second time that Lindenwood and Arc State have played this, this season. Year. Yeah, so um, with that, uh, I think Lindenwood, from that prior experience and from that prior knowledge of, of how to prepare for Arc State, I think they came into the game with a better understanding of how Arc State played the game and I think they prepared well for that, which yeah. I think in the end m- caused more struggle for our state. So yeah, um, let's let's go over to the other side of the country where um, Navy traveled to play St. Mary's. Yeah, so Navy seems like they were the, the big boys in, during the fall semester, that they were just rolling over teams. They were probably, argue, at one point in time, you could argue that they were the best they were, team in the nation. Yeah, they were very competitive with with every team they played or yeah, dominating it, those yeah, teams. Like, yeah, because they went on a, what, a five, six game winning streak against Quite a few. big teams yeah. like uh, like Kutztown, yeah. Army, obviously, yeah. Yeah, so us. They were, they were rolling through. And, Davenport, and, yeah. Uh, but they traveled to California and did not come back with a win. Oh yeah, they. I mean, it was a close. It was somewhat of a close game, forty-three to twenty-five. Um, well, yeah. Um, at halftime, it was. It I was, was about twenty-four to, say, to twenty. It, yeah, I, I think it's it's the change in in halves. I, th- I think that affected quite a few teams this weekend, which we'll get to a little bit later. But I think uh, when a team comes out at close at half, but edging up the lead like when you go to that locker room you know that coach is like you better not lose this you better yeah. keep maintain this lead or expand it and i think saint mary's is a program that like when when their coach is going to come in and and tell them hey like this is a four-point game you have not won this game you need to win this game in during this half that like coming out and and pulling pulling away at the end of the game to to only allowing five points in the second half like that's that that's a it's a close game for the first half yeah for and navy i don't know why that why this why you know st mary's is able to pull away because usually navy is able to play hard and physical for all 80 minutes just yeah. because they're so well uh conditioned and f- just fit in general right yeah like they they're they're a team that can play a 90 minute game if they uh, easily like they're compared to many See, of the others and even at that it, it said like the highest navy level. navy was able to get a little bit of an advantage when uh st mary's had a yellow card in the yeah. second uh so you know it, 
it needs to be like one half like you know it's, it needs to be like exploited a little bit better I guess yeah yeah I don't well, know if that was about to say there. Uh, maybe so. just St. Mary's is just really really well coached nowadays yeah um, which I think is pretty likely so um, on other note uh, that game was played at Cal it yeah, was at so the Cal Stadium because it was it was a partnership with another game of Army versus Cal. So they had the two of the military academies come in and and play to the California squads at, at, in California. So um, in and in that game, in that game, it was a, a similar narrative except Cal was able to pull that one away. So at halftime, Way Cal more. was. Uh, Cal and uh, Army were top. Are they were Cal was scored at 19, 19 to twelve? My bad. Yes, yes. And then, it, but in the second half, the uh, Golden Bears were able to exploit uh, did the defensive space and pulled away with a sixty-two to twenty-two win. So Cal just they went from oh they, God. they went from nineteen to sixty-two from a seven-point game to a, a forty-point final game. Ooh, yeah. that's tough. Although, I mean, to, it sh- does show that, like, like Army, I mean, they still, in the second half, they put up 10. So, like, to, it shows that, like, Cal still had weaknesses in the second half, but obviously they're, the offensive side of the ball for them just, like, picked up in pace and picked up in strength and, and just, like, began to abuse the weaknesses that Army had as a not as defined, refined program in college rugby. I think this game has cow smelling blood for the Natty for a national championship. Ooh. I, I think, I, yeah, I, I, I would agree. Especially because they know that Life's lost a game this season. Lindenwood's lost a game this season. Like, they, like everyone is volatile this year. Yeah, anything can happen. And now that Cal seems like they're the big boys you know, walking around, yeah. that they might be, you know, thinking, you know what, this is the year that we win one. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that would be a little bit of a change-up. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. We've had Mid-South controlling the national championship for... Well, some time uh, now. Some time, yeah. And, and Cal really taking it back. Because it's been... Because they, they've had championships in the past, and they've just been short by little for the last few years. Yeah, I mean, so. you know, California is a big rugby rugby state, so. Yeah. Um, another uh, interesting D1A game that occurred, we have Davenport playing Indiana. So Indiana was the um, Big Ten champions this year, um, and Davenport uh, went out and uh, won 28-17. So... Um, Shows you that, like the Big Ten, um, even though with Indiana as champions, is is just a weaker conference in terms. It of just I wouldn't say it's a weaker conference. It just shows that how dominant the Mid South can be. True, that's true. Especially because like Davenport is not not a top half team in the in the Mid South. Like in the Mid South, you you've got Lindenwood, Life, Navy, and Arch State controlling in those those top three and four right. spots and and then below is where Davenport sits so like you you just like you it shows goes to show you that how 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 much more dominant the the mid-south is so yeah um other other you know, a quick roundup of some of the other games um Cal Poly beat UC Santa Barbara 38 to 14 um we got the Grand Canyon beating San Diego State forty-five to three. Whew. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's the D one A again. Like we've been saying, as of, like it, it just seems like there's a lot of dominant teams, and then there's like a lot of like not as dominant teams. Like you look at the Mid South; these like all the Mid South teams are able to go just destroy, and like these Cal Poly teams and like. Cal Poly, St. Mary's, Cal, uh, they're able to dominate over some of these other teams like Army. You know, it just seems that there's a lot of, yeah, a the, lot of the, mismatch. The, yeah, there's there's a lot of mismatch. Um, to f- to round off our our um, roundup of scores for the weekend and whatnot. Yeah. Um, 
UCLA, 56 to zero against, against Utah. Utah. This is their first win of the season. Wow. That's their and first it's a, win? 50, yeah, they're one and Didn't two. Utah goes like. Utah had a 0 0 game against Central Washington. And Central Washington had is, a, is a top, 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 top 10. Yeah, top. Yeah, I think top they're seven 10 right team. Now. Yeah, okay. They're top seven. So they're a top 10 team. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So, wow. so UCLA. That was not expected. Wow, <laughs> I don't I don't think anybody was that looked at, at UCLA, that. UCLA, do you know? Um, I'm not sure actually. I can see if I can find it, but I'm not I'm not quite sure um, where that game was. Well, I just, UCLA is, you know, that got was a good rugby squad. No, that was at I mean, Utah. That was at Utah. That was at wow. Utah. I mean, UCLA's Ooh. got a good squad, but when they Oh, yeah, they're against... still 15, but, like, they're still 15th in the nation. Although, not to say it's not completely unsurprising, because Utah did lose a couple weeks ago 107-0 to to Arizona. But Arizona's also top 15 team. They're ranked 12th right now. So, Wow. And then Central Washington and <sighs> Utah went 0-0. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, Central Washington is doing pretty well on their own as well. Um, they just beat BYU, who's ranked nine, so only two behind them, but they beat them 51-7. to seven. Dang. So, like, the the but D1A is all over the place it, right the, now D1A in terms of scoring. Yeah, people, it's, it's, like, the games are just so dominant by sev- some of these teams. It's just, like, mind-blowing. So, um... Yeah, on that, like... That's a wrap-up for scores. Yeah, let's... let's you want to hear some um, interesting news that came out from this last week? <laughs> yes, this is what I want to hear. Eligibility, right? Yep. Yeah. So, the University of Notre Dame run, men's rugby team have been sanctioned by the D1A for eligibility violations as of <sighs> as of uh, five days ago. Yeah. So, according to a D1A ruling, Notre Dame... So, it's the University of Notre Dame, not co- Notre Dame right, College. Right, right, right. University of Notre Dame. You know... That they had three players that who were playing in the fall, who weren't exactly on their team, wasn't or what, weren't students. Of were, Notre Dame. Okay, so they were not students, so they so, were not eligible for a collegiate level. Right. So in the past, in the in years previous, the Notre Dame, uh, Holy Cross, and St. Mary's, which are the three big schools up there in, in South Bend, Indiana. They're mm-hmm. kind of just like all in the same area. Mm-hmm. I, like, shoot, I think Holy Cross is in Notre Dame, uh, Notre Dame, Indiana. Yeah. So anyway, there, you know, three sco- uh, schools that are very close by have a consortium agreement, and that would allow players from Holy Cross and St. Mary's to go play rugby for uh, University of Notre Dame. So, so similar, similar to what Clemson used to have with, with Tri County, right? So it's a similar to agreement that it was kids. that it was fine, but. It's not okay when you're playing D1A. So right. the D1A, as of a year or so ago, said, okay, we don't want any more of these consortium agreements. That's why some of our Tri-County players couldn't play for yeah. Clemson. Or unless they transferred to unless Clemson. Unless they transferred to Clemson. Which some of them did. do. Yeah. They were already planning on it, but it, they just yeah, did it a little sooner so they could still partake in the D1A game. So, so not. Yeah, exactly. So they... They had this consortium agreement, and the D1A was like, uh-uh, we're not having it. And yet, Notre Dame still had guys come and play in the fall. So so they were still, like, rostered with USA Rugby, but they weren't eligible with D1A Rugby. Exactly. So okay. the ex- consortium agreement was with USA Rugby. Interesting. So that they okay. could go and yes. play other teams who were outside of the D1A with these players, but right. if they were to play D1A sanctioned matches, it was not eligible. No, not eligible. Yeah. So due to this, um, the yeah. So what Notre is the punishment? Dame has been suspended from D1A action for the rest of the, this uh, year. So basically through May, and then co- head coach Justin Hickey is gonna has been suspended for an entire year. From D one A. From D one, he's been suspended through February twenty seventh of twenty twenty one. Wow. Wow. I mean, I guess like 
that's in violation of the the <coughs> DNA policies that everybody else has been following. At least I would hope have been following. Um, if not, then somebody needs to call those teams out on it. But but I mean, when you violate a policy that is put in pl- put in place for the league to be able to play in, it makes sense. You know, like a year punishment <coughs> in the grand scheme is th- most of this season's over. So it's the first half of next year. Yeah. Maybe the second half if they have a lot of early games, but like they'll probably not schedule them early, you know? Like knowing that. Well, my big thing is is that there are, have been talks that the D1A is going to be reformed into a new conference. So I wonder if these suspension violations will be moved over into hmm. this new reform. Yeah. Oh, we Oh, if we want to talk about the reform, we could do a whole nother episode. Yeah, we on could do that. a whole nother episode <laughs> of this. Yeah, so I don't know. That's interesting. Um, I would be curious to know how that goes. So I would very, very much love to hear it. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know if it would because it they if if it's gonna be a new reform or whatever, they're gonna put in new mandates, new grounds and all this sort of stuff and he's not suspended from usa rugby right so who knows you know i mean he's not obviously he's he'll probably still maintain his position at notre dame like i don't i don't see why they probably will just have another coach step in step in specifically for d1a just a hickey which you know clemson rugby has had you know, has great experience, great experience, with. great history with. Yeah. I don't think Notre Dame's going to be like, all right, because of this, you're, you know, yeah, you're gone. But so I think he, I think he'll still be around. He'll yeah. still be around, and he'll still be a good coach for them. Agreed. So, I, I think that's um, our conversations for today. So, a quick little um, reminder to end the podcast. Uh, rest of Clemson's schedule. They've got yep, yep. U- UNC Wilmington at the end of this month where they're going to travel to. Um, then they've got the Tropical Sevens in Orlando. Um, what was that? April 10th? April 10th. Um, that weekend. That weekend. Uh, and then uh, to finish off the year, they play the big rivalry match against USC. Heck yes. So I'm th- excited. I am too. I'm can't wait to watch that game. So, yeah. Um, uh, on that note, uh, we're going to finish up the podcast here. So, thank you again for listening. Um, we always enjoy doing this every week, and we love to hear from you guys. If you want to comment, like, share, uh, tell us your Let opinions us, on you D1A. Give some feedback, like, everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, on that note, uh, CJ, you've got one one last thing to say, right? Yeah, my usual. Everybody has to go watch some rugby. <laughs> um, this Actually, this next week, I would say my game of the week is going to be um, Rooney versus Seattle. Of course. Because I think that these are two big-name teams, right? And I think Seattle needs to kind of prove something. So yeah. maybe they go out and beat Rooney. They for sure have to prove something to me. <laughs> right. Uh, so... so. On that, this has been another episode of Tigers Talk Rugby. Thanks for listening.